Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Life. This video, we are going to solve a little problem. Uh, this is my small wheel attachment and really handy, very versatile tool. But the one issue I have is that this angle at which the belt kind of approaches on either side of this wheel, it limits the ability for me to get into really tight places. Now I'd been thinking about doing this modification, uh, honestly, for like a year or two and never really knew how I was going to approach it. <laughs> and then yeah, I just kind of thought about, a, you know, really needing this thing. I had a, a bunch of these little knives to do. I'm like, I got to get this done. And the solution is so incredibly simple. Uh, but first we got to address a couple things. So this tooling arm that I have, uh, I'm not, I, I forget what the difference is between hot rolled and cold rolled. I believe this is hot rolled. I, I could be entirely incorrect. Uh, maybe I'll try and pit a comment on this video, but I believe hot rolled has not as nice of a finish and it's also not quite uh, as tight of tolerance as cold rolled is a little bit more precise. And uh, the issue with this tooling arm here is that it was kind of bowed. There's like a hump on it. So I just wanted to make sure this was totally flat. The reason for this is that while this is a very, very simple project, um, if things aren't lined up well, it could really adversely affect the tracking of the belt. And, uh, you know, the slightest little uh, area that you're off can actually make it very difficult for your belt to track properly. So, you know, while this is literally just a matter of three holes in this project, drilling three holes in a piece of aluminum, and then uh, I did a little machining, we'll get to uh, a little spacer, nothing complicated here, but layout is important, accuracy is important, because we want this thing to track just as good with or without this modification that I'm doing here. So this is a piece of inch and a half square aluminum and this is definitely beyond the capacity of my little 10 inch woodworking bandsaw. Uh, I think during the process of this cut I destroyed the blade. Oh well, took one for the team. Now here you can see it's not cutting at all. <laughs> it literally wouldn't even cut any wood. Oh, well, we got our uh, aluminum done that we needed. And we'll just give that a cleanup for aesthetic reasons, make it look good. Also remove any burrs. And uh, again, thinking about laying this thing out properly and, and uh, the precision. I don't want to necessarily say precision. Accuracy is what we want. So any little burrs hanging out at the end, you know, all that stuff would kind of adversely affect the ultimate. You know, when you're building projects, even something as small as this, it's amazing how if you had a couple of these steps or a few little things not quite right, by the time you start adding all those together, you can end up with a real schmazzle. You know, you'll end up with something that just doesn't work. So I always find that, you know, taking the time at every single step, deburring after a certain process really helps keep things uh, consistent and you get a much better final result. Again, keeping a close check that this is all lined up before we mark out our holes. And these transfer punches, I use these all the time. They are so handy. Uh, you know, for knife making, transferring, you know, from a template onto a piece of steel and then also for fabrication like this. I don't know how many times, almost every time I'm, I'm building something for my grinders. I end up pulling these suckers out, but uh, you got to be careful. I just, I kind of shanked myself there on the thumb while I was putting that one away. Much faster than laying it out and measuring. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to drill these holes and, uh, these are, we're using three eighths bolts. So we're going to go three eighths is the whole size. And, uh, you know, if that doesn't work out, we can always enlarge it a little bit because when we go to bolt this block on, we can kind of wiggle it around. But ultimately, if everything's laid out properly, we should be able to almost use the bolt holes as locating holes. I tell you, dormer countersinks or SKF countersinks. I've probably had this one here for, I want to say 10 years, and it's still just unbelievable. Nice and slow, countersinks, you need to go nice and slow with them. You don't want to be running them fast. 
And if it's steel or harder materials, definitely give it a little hit of uh, cutting fluid. But man, those will last a long time when you buy good quality ones. So there's a basic concept. You can see nothing, nothing overly complicated. I was considering using a piece of angle iron instead of that aluminum block, but I thought, you know what? That aluminum will be more rigid. I mean, I've got it. I've got material kicking around. And then the wheel that I use, I don't know when I purchased this, but it has been like out in a parts bin in my shipping container for several years. I believe I got it from uh, knifegrinderparts.com. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, they sell lots of different wheels and stuff like that, but um, I'm actually going to buy some more of these because I would like to make a platen, just like a regular flat platen without the flat part in there as a permanent tool so that I've always got, you know, a slack platen that I can put in there, but... Uh, that's, that's the basic concept right there. We're just going to drill and tap this hole and, uh, put a wheel on there. And I only need it on the one side, just the configuration of the black Fox grinder, uh, from the bottom side, it's a fairly straight line to the drive wheel. So it's not like we need one on the bottom, one on the top. And, uh, yeah, so easy. Now I'd set this up in the milling machine because I wanted to make sure we had a nice, straight, very accurate hole. And then hoping that this one would follow nicely. I do enjoy working with aluminum just because it cuts so easy and so fast. And it's also lightweight. You know, a part like this in steel, it's just, I don't know. Uh, aluminum is one of my favorite materials to build tooling from you know, so long as it will work in the application. Now, this is a little trick I, I do genuinely, but I find out that it isn't effective with aluminum. So I'm going to be tapping this out to a half inch 13 thread. And what I did right there is drill a bit of a half inch hole. So we counterboard half inch. The idea being that will help start the tap nice and straight. That works great in steel if you have enough room to do this. So this was coming from the backside, uh, the side that the bolt's not going to be starting from. Uh, but you can, <laughs> you can see here, the aluminum doesn't have enough strength to guide that tap in and it'll just start gouging and cutting. doesn't matter how straight or crooked it is. That is crooked. Yes, it is. So a better way to do this is I'm going to, uh, put this in the drill press. First, I make sure that that hole is centered with the spindle and then I put a center punch into the drill chuck and most taps have a little divot on the back side of them. Uh, a lot of tap handles have this as well. You can see there's a little divot right in there and I can put the, the pointy part of that center punch in there and since it's perfectly aligned with the hole that keeps the tap very nice and straight. And again the reason I want this is that I don't want that bolt that holds the wheel to be skewed any way, shape, or form, because that will affect its tracking. So, trying to make sure we get it right here. Now we're just going to figure out roughly where we want this wheel to be located. And then I'm going to turn a little standoff, a little bushing that will maintain that spacing. I just use black pipe. I had some as actually literally in my lathe from a different project. Not sure what that project was, but <laughs> I went up to it and I was like, that's the material I want. And I just went and drilled it out and parted it off. And then I also made a much smaller one, uh, basically just like a washer because on the other side where the head of the bolt is, I want a little washer so I'm only tightening on the inside race of the bearing and just want to make sure I don't touch the seal area at all. And this pipe here is actually perfect diameter. So this one will be the bushing that spaces it out from the aluminum block.
And then this next one will be the little washer that we're building. on there and we put the bushing on there we'll tighten it up and that is literally how easy this little project was a whole lot of rocket science going on but you know what this is a little something something that's like man you do a google image search and you see various ways things are done and i don't remember seeing one that was this like plain like this simple like there's nothing to it also, on my Black Fox, I can actually put this tooling arm down one lower, and it's even a tighter radius. So I'm basically coming in as tight as I possibly can, you know, with the main body of the small wheel holder. But I don't know why. I don't know why this idea didn't come to me before, because <laughs> there's nothing to it. You know, maybe an hour or two of work. Um, luckily, I had this small wheel. You could also use like a... a longboard skateboard wheel something like that and the results are exactly what i was hoping for now we can get in here on these little last ditch neckers you know on other knives and get these intricate little tiny areas put in and i really really am glad to have this done well, i want to thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and uh, we'll catch you on the next one cheers